Brother, you are welcome. Tell us your name, where you came from, and your wonderful testimony. Tulongo ele dina loe, apa waja, nubangi hokolo loe mua. Dina langa be Gideon, nda jamu wedi. My name is Gideon from Obadiva. Nda lo kupando la tete kamu jesha ni jamu kupita mofti ya Apostle Shonde. I want to thank God the Father for what He has done for me through His servant Apostle Shonde. Yeah, tete mangi nanti apa ni raba, nda kala ni shikula Apostle Shonde ko Facebook. Before I came to this place, I used to follow Apostle on Facebook. Yeah, And while I've been following, I've been observing his works. And I always used to pray that let God help his servants who are serving him in spirit and in truth as he wills. And then I always used to say I will take a step and go to the church. And that was in February. So every time when I'm knocking off, I will just postpone to Saturday. When I knock off on Tuesday, on Saturday, I will postpone to Tuesday. It was in March. Uh, sorry, it was in March. And that was now in March. And because I'm a builder, I left town to go to Enana and Dola, sorry, because I was having a project there. And I had a dream where I saw the apostle telling me that to wait for me the way that you are going so that we can walk together. Yeah. And I told a colleague of mine because he goes to revival churches. Yeah. And before I even told him that dream, he always used to invite me to church. And I always used to tell him that no, I can't go to church because I did not bring any clothing that is appropriate to go to church. Brother, when you had that dream, the man of God is telling you that you should not go but you should wait for him so that he take you along. Have you ever met the man of God before? He said never before did he meet the servant of God. Or maybe telephonically. He said he never spoke to him on the phone and neither did he ever set foot on that on this uh, in this church yet. The time you had that dream, were you born again? Uh, he said no, he wasn't born again either. You're welcome to take us through your testimony. Uh, and while we were at Ndola, I came back to Ngojiva. And on Sunday, the 23rd of June, I, I was watching the service, the church service on Facebook. And then I told my cousin that I had a dream of the apostle telling me in the dream that the way that I'm going is not good, that I should wait for him so that we can walk together. He asked me if it's so, and I said yes. He said you need to go to church so that you will see the man of God and you tell him about that dream. Yeah. And that Sunday, the, the Monday the next day, I just woke up with a terrible tummy ache and I could not even get up from the bed. And then I remember that I'm having the prayer line numbers. And I called one of the prayer line numbers. And 
and I, the, uh, the woman on the prayer line never asked me where the pain was and I told him it in the stomach and I could not move or get up from the bed or do anything. And he asked me, where are you, sir? And I said, I'm in Obediva. And he asked me if I ever, she asked me if I ever got the chance to come to Apostle Shombe Ministries because they are only in Obediva and Domatando. And then I honestly told her that every time that I'm deciding to come, I'm just postponing. And she told me that we should be careful of such spirits because that is Satan that doesn't want you to get delivered. And the woman prayed for me. And somebody rejoice in the Lord. She said after he said after she prayed for her, the pain in the tummy first started getting worse and late, later on it disappeared and then he was able to get up and to continue doing what he wanted to do. And from there on, he said I was free and I was even able to come and meet the servant of God for one on one on Saturday. And that was on the 29th of July. And then when I met the servant of God, I narrated the dream to him. <laughs> And he told me that I should be careful. Did the man of God told you, or he gave you a word of prophecy? Or be specific. And then the servant of God gave me a prophecy that I should stay far from alcohol and women. Today is over. Okay. No longer follow the wrong journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, madam. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today is over. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you confirm this prophecy to be true? Uh, at first when I received the prophecy from the servant of God I was confused but luckily because it was noted down by one of the ashes and I was referred to the clinic where the counselors could explain the prophecy to me clearly. And then when I went there, I asked the counselor at the clinic that I received this prophecy that I should stay away from alcohol, yet I don't drink alcohol. I don't understand it. And the counselor told me that no, it's not because you are already drinking, but this is a spiritual thing. And because I used to drink alcohol before, but I stopped drinking on the 6th of June this year. And they are confirmed that this prophecy is true because I always get attacked by the thoughts and sometimes telling me my, myself in my thoughts that I really want to drink some beer. But I never buy it even though I desire it. And concerning the ladies, I will also confirm the prophecy to be true because whenever I leave home and I go even to a mall, I will not come back without asking a number from any lady. But when I come home, I will immediately delete that number. I confirm that those prophecies are true because those spirits have been following me. Hallelujah. Put your hands together louder for our Lord Jesus Christ. How did 
this prophecy brought liberty in your life because first we believe that the prophecy comes reveals in that Hallelujah! Somebody rejoice in the Lord! He said that these prophecies really changed his life because he no longer gets the thoughts of desiring beer. And also, whensoever he meets a lady and then he would want to ask a number, the first thing that would come into his mind is what the apostle prophesied to him. And I also had a problem of not sleeping with my light off. Whenever I sleep, I have to uh, turn on the light. Because whenever I would switch off that light, I would just be seeing snakes chasing me, biting me, and even cats tormenting me. I don't sleep. I kept coming to church. I remember one Sunday when the servant of God was telling us that when we are praying, uh, that we should always say, Lord, whenever I'm sleeping, I tell this body can be sleeping, but let my spirit be awake and watchful. That's how I prayed that Sunday. Every time you want to switch off the light in your house, the light in your house, the evil powers, evil agents, they think you are inviting them. They don't believe that you are switching off because your mind and your body need to rest. They think you are inviting them so that they work in darkness. You're supposed to believe that when you sweep off the natural light, the moment you sweep off the natural light, you sweep on the spiritual light. So that when they try to come, so you will see them. 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 But when I looked at them, they only looked down like they were ashamed. I know their faces. And those are the people who are acclaimed to be just. And when I saw those faces, they shortly afterwards disappeared and I woke up. Hallelujah! Somebody rejoice in the Lord! I said rejoice in the Lord! Our brother is saying that he's now able to sleep peacefully even with the lights off. This to tell us that Jesus Christ is great. And he's the best 
for us it is the best for us to reflect what the word of God is telling us even when he's ministering to us remember this word that our brother has just said the word of God has said it during the time of the sermon but because he accept it and take it and apply it so he become one with this word and then this word bear fruits in his life that's why he's here today testifying of the greatness of our Lord Jesus Christ clap your hands beautifully for our Lord Jesus Christ before the brother continue we just need to look one of a clip when he come in counter with the seven of God Apostle Shombe. You can see him how he was and how he is now. You can see a big difference. So let us put our hands together in order for our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, brother, you're welcome to take us through your testimony. Yeah. And then Sunday when the servant of God prayed for me. He said it is not my responsibility for me to tell who I am. Except Jesus Christ will come and tell you by himself who I am as I'm walking with him. And that day he spoke saying there is a young man and then he asked before you come into this you came into this church what is it that was done and I told him about the dream as I have narrated it at the beginning before you come here what happened it was in 20th of June <laughs> He dreamed. Uh, in the dream, he saw and heard Apostle Shombe telling him that, wait for me, that is not the way you are going. Wait for me to go with you. Before you receive the message, have you, have you ever been here before? Mangawe is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the Have you ever talked before, maybe the phone or something? I'm going to go to the apostle. He said he never been here and he did not talk to the men of God before the dream. So that is how he's supposed to come. So that when your neighbor tells you that I don't like this church, I'm going, let's go. You just look at him or her like this, then you said, You means you are lost. Yes. Yes. Because if your neighbor says this is church is fake, because you you come by an assignment. You tell him that me, I know where I am. Thank you. Because when you come, you come with him. You do not come with a human being. No one chase, uh, uh, force you to come here. So you Bless you, brother. Focus. 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 You cannot come here for nothing. So I'm a testimony myself. 
He said that I should be serious. Because when I came to this church, I came with an assignment. So that even if my neighbor says that this church is not fine, we should go. I know where I am because I came with Jesus. Christ. Hallelujah! Somebody rejoice in the Lord! I don't know if you have heard that. Then if you have heard that, put your hands together Lord, follow Jesus Christ. Brother, what are your words of encouragement you are giving to somebody suffering? I just want to encourage them. Prayer is the most important thing. We should pray unto God and ask for his help so that he can give us direction. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3 It said call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know Hallelujah Amen A word of encouragement to you Remain faithful and confident in the Lord. Make the word of God a standard of your life. Your healing and your deliverance is permanent in the, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed and rejoice always in the Lord. We are rejoicing together with you. Somebody rejoice in the Lord.